Yeah, welcome to numerical methods. So the acceptance rejection sampling gave us now a nice yeah, intuition for a little bit more flexible Monte Carlo approximation. So we had here this weighted Monte Carlo approximation where we average our function evaluations H yeah, applied to a different sequence here, the sequence Y, but then we multiply with a weight W such that this approximate the expectation of H of X. More generally speaking, if you have a Monte Carlo approximation where you have here inside a random variable Y, applied to uh, your sample pass omega y, and then you have a general weight w here applied to this, and you average the weighted values. This is called now weighted Monte Carlo um, approximation. Yeah? So h of y multiplied with the weight w of omega i, this is called weighted Monte Carlo approximation. We can use these weights in different ways. So our motivation from the acceptance rejection method was a very special application where we had the weight to be the ratio of two densities. Actually, you can use these weights in many different ways. So for example, you could be interested really in calculating the expectation of your function H applied to the random variable Y. But maybe you like to improve the accuracy. So you could use the weight to, for example, correct for numerical errors in your Monte Carlo approximation. Moment matching is one method. For example, you know the expectation of Y analytically. So then you could use the weight to correct for this. And maybe this will also then improve the expectation of H of Y. Yeah? So recall here, expectation of Y is known analytically. Then you could use these weights to just adjust a little bit the distribution to center it correctly yeah? so that the bias in your sample points is uh, removed. So that method is sometimes then called or associated with moment matching. Yeah, You can also try to match other aspects yeah, of your, your sampling. Another thing that you could improve is reduce the variance of H of Y to variance reduction because the variance will influence the Monte Carlo error. Still, you are interested in calculating the expectation of H applied to Y. So an example here would be uh, control variance. Uh, we have an, a session on control variates later, yeah? so where you see how you could use such, such, such a weight, such a modification in the Monte Carlo sum to reduce the variance of the Monte Carlo approximation and hence re reduce the Monte Carlo error. The second application is that that was motivated from acceptance rejection where we actually are interested in a different expectation, namely where we are interested in calculating the expectation of the function H applied to the random variable X. So we do this by using the special weight, namely the weight, the density F divided by the density G, where the random variable y is g distributed. So g, g is the derivative of the distribution function, capital G. And then you know that this weighted Monte Carlo sum here, this is an approximation of expectation of h of x. Yeah? You are sampling y, but uh, you are appro approximating expectation h of x. And we can use this to 
sample more important regions. So this method is then called importance sampling. So the random variable y is now such that more important regions are sampled uh, more frequently compared to what the random variable x would do. So bef before I go through this, here is a small picture of an application. So consider the function h to be, for example, like this. It is zero here, and then it is linear here. So like for a call option. So now your random variable x has this density here. So this means it will sample many points in this region here, which means that in your Monte Carlo sum, there are a lot of zeros. Yeah? Zero plus zero plus zero, because h applied to this x from this region here is always a zero. And only some few points, namely those guys here, they contribute to the sum. So you are sampling a lot of stuff in regions yeah, that are actually not important. Yeah? This region here is uh, not so important. Maybe we can just sample a different random variable, y, which has its density in the more important regions, for example, like that. Okay, now Then we would have many points from this region, and we get many points that actually contribute to the integral. It's maybe not so clear, yeah, what is now the good shift, yeah, if you just shift the mean of the distribution to a more important region. So maybe sometimes you just guess it, yeah, or you, you just try it, yeah, but uh, often it is clear that a certain shift will do an improvement. Okay, so important sampling is now the following idea. I have two random variables, x, you know, the one which I actually like to sample, and y. So now let's be general, d-dimensional integral random variables. So assume I know here the two densities, phi of x and phi of y. So that means if you have the expectation of h of x, okay, then you can express this as the integral phi x dx and expectation h applied to the y can be expressed as the integral h of y phi y dy. Then I like to use now my weighted Monte Carlo. So I need to define the weight. Yeah, my weight is as before, the density that I would like to have divided by the density of the sequence that I'm using. So my weight, now I, instead of f and g, I use phi x and phi y. So my weight is phi x divided by phi y. But I cannot divide by phi y if phi y is zero. But note that in my Monte Carlo approximation, I'm sampling y. So the points where phi y is zero will never occur. So I can set actually the w to anything, yeah, let's say to zero for these uh, values. So let's define now the w as phi x divided by phi y, where phi y is larger than zero. Um, when, when can I use that? Yeah. Uh, so uh, actually the condition before was that phi x is zero whenever phi y is zero. So before we had the condition that g equals zero implies f equals zero. But now in my Monte Carlo integral, I integrate h times the phi. Yeah? So 
actually it's not a problem if I'm in an unimportant region. Yeah. So the condition is whenever h of y times phi of y is zero. Yeah? So that means either the point is impossible in the sequence y or it is not important in the function h, then uh, h of y times phi of x should be zero two. So either the point should be not important, so h of y should be zero anyway, or we should have the condition, if it is impossible in the y sequence, it has to be impossible in the x sequence. So in that case, I can now express the expectation of h, oops, of my function h applied to the random variable x. So this is the guy that I really would like to calculate. I can express that as the integral h of x by x dx. Yeah, now I can replace the phi x dx by w times phi y. So this is just equal to phi x. Actually, not always, but whenever this expression is not zero, then it's equal to phi x. So whenever h times w times phi y is not zero, then this expression is equal to phi x. Yeah, I can replace that. Okay, and then you see this is just interpretation. Yeah. So are you now integrating here h over x? Or are you now integrating here h times w over y? So I'm integrating now h times w over y. So this is just interpretation. So we integrate over y, now the function h times w. Yeah? So this is the expectation of h times w applied to my other sequence y. So instead of doing Monte Carlo integral for this guy, I can just do Monte Carlo integral for this guy. This means now integrate this function h times w uh, using samples from y. So I sample the sequence, the random number generator is now generating the y's and this is applied to h times W. Yeah, and this Monte Carlo integral could have a different Monte Carlo error. Yeah? Recall for the Monte Carlo error. What was relevant for the Monte Carlo error? It was the variance of um, h of x. Yeah? But the variance of h of x is maybe different from the variance of h times w of y. So the convergence of the Monte Carlo integral depends on the variance of the, uh, of the integrand and the variance of these two guys here, this one and that one, this could be different. So weighted Monte Carlo may be used to reduce the variance and hence improve the convergence by, like we do it here in the picture, by sampling more important regions, so we use our Monte Carlo samples more efficiently. Maybe I try this uh, in the computer, and you see that this really works uh, very well yeah, and very good. And what is a good example to use? Maybe we should use uh, an example from our application mm, evaluation of a European option under the Black Scholes model, because this function that you see here. This looks like a European option. Okay, so this H looks a little bit like maximum of X minus K and zero, where here is the K. Okay, if the European option has a strike that is, well, far away from the at the money point, yeah, so far outside from what you would expect here, huh? then maybe it's good to sample your underlying values, in this case, the values of the stock, 
using a shift of the mean, an artificial shift of the mean, and then correct for it with the weight. So let's have a small coding session. Calculate the Monte Carlo approximation. So I take here the sum of the random variable z. Yeah, so I would like to calculate exp expectation of that. Well, what I would like to approximate is the value of a European option. So I have here v0 is the value of a European call option. You know by the universal pricing theorem that you can express this as the expectation of V at a later time, V at maturity, divided by the numeraire. Okay. Where the value of my option at that later time, this is now a European option. This is now given by the maximum of the stock minus K and zero no? of S the stock value S of T minus K um, and C. So that's my option payoff. Huh? So recall that's just the payoff function. Uh, this is K uh, and this is the axis ST. Huh? So I would like to calculate the expectation of maximum of the stock value minus k and zero divided by the numeraire. Okay, the numeraire in the Black-Scholz model, this is just initial value of the numeraire times exponential RT, R is the interest rate, capital T is the maturity. What is the stock value? For the stock value, we take a log normal value uh, model. So we take now the Black-Scholz model for the stock. So I have the stock value is the initial value of the stock multiplied with exponential RT minus one half sigma squared T plus sigma W of T, where W of T is a square root of T times X. And X is now a standard normal distributed random variable. So we had the Black-Scholz model already in our session with the motivation on the application. So that's just the same thing here. And now you see, well, what is, what is the random variable that we use as an input? Let's use this X here as an input. So that's the random variable. And we have different functions. Yeah? So the first function we have is that of the stock here, okay, this is applied to my x, yeah? so you see my input is my normal distributed x, my normal distributed x is multiplied with square root of t, multiplied with sigma, then I add this drift part here, r times t minus one half sigma square t. Then I apply the exponential and multiply with a zero to get the stock value. Then I plug the stock in to my function maximum of that minus k. Mm -hmm. Then I divide by the n of capital T and multiply with the n zero. So that means I multiply with exponential minus rt. So the whole thing is that we have to calculate expectation of the random variable z. And the random variable z is now maximum of s zero times exponential rt minus one half square t. So this is the S of capital T minus K and zero multiplied with exponential minus R capital T. So this here is my random variable X. 
and this here is my function h. So this is my h of x. So we would like to calculate expectation h of x. But I use now important sampling. So this picture here, by modifying the random variable x uh, and applying a certain shift. Uh, that shifts a little bit the distributions of the stock uh, to higher values. So instead of this x, I consider now the y where y is x plus some, some h. Let's try this in the computer and check how the method works. So I have here package, Monte Carlo weighted experiments, and we can create a new class. Let's call that class important sampling. experiment. Okay, I need a few parameters. Yeah, let's try a certain set of model parameters you find in the script a suggestion you could use. Let's use just uh, C's. Initial stock value is 100. The interest rate R is 5%. My sigma parameter, the volatility is 30%. And these are my model parameters for the Black Scholes model. The product parameters. Capital T, the option maturity should be, say, five years. Yeah, and the option strike. Yeah, where do we take it? Um, you see, I have a 5% increase in every year. I have five years. Yeah? Okay, maybe I go up to 25%. Yeah? Interest rate on interest rate is a little bit larger than that. So it would be a hundred and twenty-five. Yeah. So where maybe the mean of the um, distribution has moved. Let's take an option strike that is far higher no, or a little bit higher, one hundred and fifty. So it's further to the right. Let's use some Monte Carlo parameters. So the parameters from my Monte Carlo approximation. So this is the seed for the random number generator. And the number of sample paths, uh, let's take 10,000. So I need the main method to run my program. Okay, let's just uh, maybe create a plot. So since I have my parameters here as fields to this class, I need to instantiate this class. So let's instantiate this class and then just call a method. Let's call the method plot on this class. I don't have the method. Let's create the method. And this should be our method that plots a little bit the results. Yeah, I would like to use different shifts for the um, random variable x. Yeah, The random variable x here in my example is normal distributed, yeah, a standard normal, yeah, so mean zero, standard deviation one. So maybe I should use shifts around the standard deviation. Let's take shifts between zero and three. Yeah? I would like to, sh to shift to the positive part. Yeah, so let's generate a few examples. Say I have a loop here that runs from zero to 100. And my shift is i divided by 100 times 3. Yeah? So these will generate shifts that are between 
CRN3, yeah, shifts to the distribution for which I would like to, to do important sampling. And what I would like to investigate is how does the Monte Carlo error or my approximation error change if I now modify the distributions of these samples using the important sampling method? So let's calculate this. So this is the Monte Carlo error for that given shift. So I will create a function that calculates this. So get MC error for value of this importance sampling shift. And I pass this shift. And maybe I can just print this. So what is the shift? And what is the error that we that we have, that we observe? So he will create now a small table of 100 different experiments with these different um, shifts. Yeah, let's do now the calculation. And now you will see how um, important sampling uh, works. So what are we doing? We like to do a Monte Carlo approximation. So for this, I need a random number generator. Yeah, So let's have a random number generator 1D. Let's use our math and twister with the given seed that we have specified above. Okay. Um, I would like to analyze the Monte Carlo error and in the application of a Black Scholes model, yeah, we are lucky we know the analytic solution. So I know the analytic value of the expectation. So I have a formula in my library that calculates the analytic value for you. So this is in analytic formulas. There is a black shows option value. And this one here is maybe nice. This one takes as parameters the initial stock value, the risk-free rate, the volatility, the option maturity, the option strike. So the initial stock value, the risk-free rate, the volatility, the option maturity, and the option strike. And it returns the analytic value. Now let's do weighted Monte Carlo integration. So I loop over all my samples. Let's call the index i. This is now a loop from zero to number of samples. Yeah, and it's number of samples minus one. Let's generate the uniform random number from my random number generator. Let's transform that to a standard normal. So we use the inversion of the distribution function applied to the uniform to get the standard normal sample. So that's actually here my x in this example. Okay, this is my x, but now I would like to apply a shift to it. Yeah. So then it will be the sample of my y. So let's write it like this, okay? Yeah, the x is the original one, which I would shift the sample, but now I shift the random variable by applying a shift to the x. Yeah? So y is x plus shift. And now I use this y in my function h. Yeah? So here in my function, I use this y and multiply with the weight. So my function is now calculate the stock value. So this is the initial value of the stock multiplied with the exponential of r times t minus one half sigma squared, yeah? so volatility times volatility times t, okay, plus sigma, so volatility times square root of t times my standard normal x, but now the x replaced with dy times the y. 
So this would be the S, yeah? and now I apply the payoff function. So the payoff is the maximum of S minus the strike and zero. And I discount it, so I multiply with the exponential minus RT. Okay, so now I have my value. Yeah. Okay, I like to calculate a Monte Carlo approximation. Yeah, so I calculate the sum over all these h of yj. Yeah. So I calculate now the sum. And I would also would like to calculate the sum of the errors because actually we are not so interested in the value. We are actually interested in the Monte Carlo error. Yeah? So the sum would be just at the payoff, but the sum of the errors is now the sum, okay, of this value minus the analytic value. Yeah, so where's my analytic value? It's here. Okay, this is the error, but I would like to have the variance. So let's take the square of this. Yeah, so this is the sum of the squared errors, if you would like to have. Okay, so the value with the Monte Carlo is the sum divided by the number of samples and the Monte Carlo error is the error divided by the number of samples and from that the square root. So that's the root mean squared error. Let's return that. Okay. Um, oh, let's check if this if this works. Okay, so you see different shift sizes here. And I'm sure I did a mistake. Yeah, I did a mistake. So what's the mistake? So I forgot about the weight. So we like to do weight Monte Carlo. So when we apply a shift to the value, we have to correct for the shift with a weight. So the weight is the ratio of the two densities. The density that I would like to have that's that of a standard normal. So exponential minus x squared half divided by squared of 2p. And the divided by the density that we use. So that is the density of the shifted standard normal. So a standard normal with the mean shift. Yeah, the standard normal with the mean shift has density exponential minus x minus shift squared half. So the weight is exponential, and now we have to be a little bit careful. The density applied to the random variable to the sample we use. So it's w of y. So it is exponential minus y squared half so that's the standard normal, which we would like to have divided by exponential minus y minus shift squared half. So you could also just write exponential minus y squared half plus y minus shift squared half. Yeah, we need to use that weight to calculate the value. And then I take the Monte Carlo average of these values, and I would like to compare it to the analytic solution. So I take the root mean squared errors yeah, compared to the analytic solution. So now let's run the program again. All right, now you see that you start with very large Monte Carlo errors. They become smaller and smaller. And then after a certain shift, 
they become larger again. So in between, there is some kind of um, optimal shift. So you find this in our repository. So if you move to the lecture repository, there I also added a plot for this. So that's here in Monte Carlo weighted experiments, important sampling experiment. So you see that it's just the same, the same code that I have here. But here on top, I uh, added a little plotting. So I'm just uh, recalling all the shifts or the errors. And then I do a scatter plot. Let's run this guy. So here in so here in the package Monte Carlo weighted experiments, you see important sampling experiments. Yeah, that's just the same code. So in the lecture repository here, you find this code here in the package. Monte Carlo weighted experiments and there, which is you find this code, it's just the same, the same code. Uh, there I added a small plot. Yeah, so I'm now collecting here all the shifts, all the Monte Carlo errors, uh, collecting it in these two lists here, and perform a small scatter plot. So let's run this guy. Yeah, and now you see the Monte Carlo error as a function of the shift size. Yeah, and you see here at yeah one point five standard deviations. Yeah, we have somewhat optimally reduced the Monte Carlo variance. Here, I also print for the shift size the analytic value. 20.8 and the numerical value here you have to be a little bit careful because here you see that actually for a shift of 0.51 the numerical value agrees with the analytic value but the Monte Carlo error is still larger compared to a shift size that's around one yeah? uh, the reason is that this is Monte Carlo so I would like to reduce the Monte Carlo error, but still it can happen that by chance, yeah, a certain value is very close to the analytic value. So you see this if you change the seed here. Let's take a different seed. And you run the experiment again. Then I get a very similar picture. Okay, so optimal Monte Carlo Variance reduction around that shift. And now also this shift size of 0 0.51 yeah, is a little bit off yeah, from the analytic value yeah, and a larger shift would be, would be better. So you have to be careful. What we like to do is variance reduction, yeah, get the optimal shift to have the minimum Monte Carlo error. Okay, so that was our small code session on important sampling, yeah?